Are you ready to take your real estate investing business to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. With your mentors, Wayne and Gabby. Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023. The weather today will be a high 1 degree in Edmonton, 1 degree in Calgary, 7 degrees in Vancouver, 3 degrees in Saskatoon, and 5 degrees in Toronto. Thanks, Evie. We are back. For good? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Goodness gracious. We uh, have been having so much trouble lately yeah so much trouble lately um but uh i think we got everything all figured out whoop, whoop. do we need to address what happened yesterday <laughs> i temporarily moved my office and everything was working i'm like i gotta okay i gotta make sure everything is set up stayed properly up late, making sure it was. stayed up late making sure everything's working properly because it's, it's such a complicated setup one button not on We'll mess things up and everything's all good. And then uh, got to, got up in the morning and um, couldn't turn my computer on. <laughs> uh, long story short for the, for, for you um, computer geeks and nerds, um, Windows did an update and by itself. And uh, apparently I was the, the computer wasn't compatible with everything <laughs> like that. The, that didn't have everything that it was needed for the update. So it just said, fuck you. I'm not going to turn on. Peace out. Peace Done. out. So it took me like hours trying to figure out how to get this thing back. But I, I figured it out. I'm actually quite proud of myself. <laughs> Absolutely. I said, that's what I said to you. I, I said, good for you. Because like you were explaining to me what exactly happened and what you had to do. And I was like, um, yeah, wouldn't have figured that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good though. We got her. We got her all figured. Would you out. like writing code and stuff? <laughs> I wouldn't say writing code. Um, Copying code. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just like if for any of you guys that have ever gone on like try to figure out how to, how to fix something and gone on YouTube and it's like, hey everybody, it's it's computer geek. Or, uh, uh, You're trying to think of a King, name that nobody. King one two <laughs> okay. three. From Computer Geek King One Two Three dot com. Today I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm just, like, just but first, like, smash that like. <laughs> first, smash that like. Subscribe and hit that bell to get all notifications on new Computer Geek One Two Three King dot com updates. I'm like shut the, just <laughs> give me what I need. And you scroll seven minutes ahead, and it's like finally they teach you how to do it. It's like okay, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got okay. You got okay. Now you need to get back into the motherboard. I'm like oh my god. <laughs> I was I was this close to just going down and dropping it off at some computer repair store and just like just fix it. I don't I don't have time for this. Yeah, but we got it done. We're here. Yeah. Anyways, um, y'all came for some real estate. Yeah, I think they came for real estate, not computer stuff. <laughs> hey, that computer stuff just stopped me from doing all of my real estate business stuff for the whole morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's only so much I can do on my on my phone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, I mean, it's, it is pretty cool. Don't get me wrong that we live in a day and age that, you know, I can work from my phone anywhere I want. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm on a beach. Look at me. I'm in a coffee shop. Yeah. Look at me. I'm on a couch. It is pretty cool. But um, it's just for, for, for our business, at least, like I've got all my files and everything much more easily accessible on my computer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. And like Zoom meetings on a phone is not all that professional. No. It's awful. Yeah. Um, so the real estate stuff, that's what you're saying. I, I got lots of stuff we could potentially talk about today. But guys, um, remember, this is a, a live show. Um, if you're listening to the podcast recording on wherever you listen to podcasts, that's cool. But if you'd like to be part of the live show, all you got to do is just download an app called Podbean on your phone, and you can listen to the show live every morning at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. You come on in, you get to see all these beautiful people like Trung and Kathleen, and I see Gabby here, and Francis is here, and Don, and um, 
Sean's here and Mitch um, and many others. And, you know, you come in here, you say hello, there's a chat box. Um, and any questions you have about real estate investing, you put it there and we'll answer it mm -hmm. for free. It's free coaching every morning. So take full advantage of it. Um, there's There's got to be something that's preventing you from doing what you need to do today. You know what you need to do. You're pretty smart. I know you think like, I don't know. You, I think you have a pretty decent understanding of what needs to be done today, what needs to be done in order to move the needle. Now, if you got a question that can help, or maybe there's something that's holding you back from doing that today, ask it. I'll help you because we know. And then go do it today. You'd be surprised with the results. So that's why we're here. Okay. Um, we're here for some other stuff too. I got some updates, some news articles and whatnot. Um, oh, why don't we get into that a little bit? So in the news today, <laughs> uh, I, we've been talking a lot about the, the big topics in the news, uh, re recently have been, um, the housing shortage. Yeah. All the right? zoning changes and, and, and what the federal government's trying to do, uh, to, to combat the housing shortage. So the two big things are um, the housing accelerator fund and fuck short-term rentals. Yep, pretty much. Those are the two big things in the news right now. Um, now we've been talking about the housing, housing accelerator fund without really diving all that deep into what it exactly is. All we've been talking about is like all these new markets that are changing their, their zoning bylaws in order to accommodate and and, and uh, make changing zoning and developing more units on a property easier. Yes. We talked about Winnipeg the other day. We talked about Edmonton's going to be changing the rules on January 1st um, and many other cities. But what is the Housing Accelerator Fund? So I did a little bit more research and, and I'm going to give you guys, I've been talking about how much is actually in that purse. And I said, I don't know how much is in that purse. I found out how much is in that purse. Okay. I heard about this when it came out earlier this year in the spring. I never really took it all that seriously because they're always talking about these new policies that come out, but then nothing ever really fucking happens. Yeah, it takes forever you know what until I mean? you actually yeah see anything come from it. So. Well, let's use a, let's use an example. Let's use, let's talk about the um, the 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 quote unquote carbon tax or whatever. What are they actually called? What's the carbon tax actually called? I hate calling it that, and then. They actually have a name for it. Click, 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 click. click. <laughs> uh, Who cares? Oh, fuck, it'll come to me later. <laughs> um, but basically, the the federal government came out with this policy that you know we're gonna um, um, we're gonna charge a levy on, on 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 yada 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 per yada yada yada. I'll get more information. <laughs> it's been so long since I've read about it. Somebody. <laughs> Throw me a life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's helpful. <guys. laughs> but the money is going to be used towards this. And they had this clear policy about what it's all going to be used towards. But then, it, like, we didn't really see all that much. Yeah. Because none of these um, none of these big companies have really taken advantage of it yet. S some smaller, like, restaurants are taking advantage of, like, the rebates for, like, you know, s changing your natural gas um, um, equipment to electric. And, you know, they're getting the rebates for solar and that type of stuff. Um, but no one, like, no one's really, we haven't seen much significant use of it yet because everybody's got so much time. Everybody hates it. They're all huffing and puffing about it. But we got, I don't know how many years until, like, the hammer actually comes down. Until, like, recently we talked about Dow Chemical mm -hmm. in Fort Saskatchewan. They took a huge incentive mm -hmm. to um, to upgrade all of their, uh, their plant there in Fort Saskatchewan. Um, so similarly, like there's all these policies that always get announced and stuff like that with the government. And then it, it's just fucking noise. Housing accelerator, very similar. I, I heard about it. I'm like, eh, whatever. It's like, yeah, well, this is the new housing accelerator plan. We're going to be pumping money into it, making sure that we're building more homes so that we have enough homes. And then like it wasn't the housing shortage. Like we were barely even talking about it in March. Yeah. And I guess, you know. Maybe I was a little naive to, to think, maybe I wasn't really looking at the data. Um, but historically, like, I've always avoided the news because it's always just fucking negative noise. Yep. But to be completely honest, like, this is becoming a very real thing. And so 
it's in, uh, it's inspired me to actually go and, and read into the housing accelerator fund, which we're going to do. Um, so in 2023, March of 2023, sorry, the government launched the $4 billion housing accelerator fund to help fast track the creation of at least 100,000 new homes across Canada. The fund is already delivering results. Um, this article was written in December of this year. Um, and on its current trajectory is expected to exceed $100,000, 100,000 new homes. Over the next three years alone, the Housing Accelerator Fund has already made progress to build over 21,000 more homes with agreements already announced with cities like London, Vaughan, Hamilton, Brampton, Kitchener, Halifax, uh, Kelowna, Calgary, and Moncton. Um, so those are the, 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 the big cities that have already hopped onto this. This is as of December 5th of this year. On November 9th, 2023, the federal government signed an agreement with Quebec for a joint contribution of $1.8 billion. The $900 million provided by the federal government, almost 23% of all housing accelerator funding, uh, will go towards building more homes for Quebecers. So 23% of that fund is going to Quebec. Um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm going to summarize the agreements the Canadian government has made with each city and the expected number of homes to be built with the help of the housing accelerator fund. So, um, do you mind if I go through the, sure. Mm, it looks like how many cities? 10 cities. Yeah. I'll go through, I'll, I'll rip through it. So London, Ontario, uh, the agreement with London was announced in September, 2023. It's just a couple months ago, making it the first city to sign an agreement with the federal government. Yeah. Here's what I mean. Like it, it yeah, London, just was, a couple months ago. London yeah. was the first one in September. This is yeah. why like they announced these things in March and you're like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever. But nobody's going to fucking use it. Um, London was the first city to sign an agreement with the federal government. The agreement will deliver $74 million in federal housing to London to build 2000 homes. The agreement includes allowing up to four units to be built on a single property in low density neighborhoods and disposing of city owned land for more development. Um, we've been seeing a lot of that in yeah. Edmonton as well. They've been, um, yeah. they've been uh, taking city owned land and, and, and changing it and converting it um, to low income housing. Uh, in addition, London will create, will work to create partnerships with nonprofit housing providers to build more affordable homes. Vaughan, Ontario uh, will, uh, the government's going to deliver $59 million in federal funding to build 1,700 homes. It will allow for high density development near public transit, like the subway and GO train stations. Uh, the agreement also prioritizes fixing outdated permitting system to speed up development and building apartments and affordable housing. Uh, Hamilton's going to get $93.5 million to build 2,600 homes. The agreement will prioritize building developments near rapid transit, including the future Hamilton LRT stations. Uh, and they're going to be uh, making city-owned lands and brownfields available for development and allowing for the construction of four residential units on one lot. Brampton, Ontario uh, will be getting $114 million mm. in federal funding to build 3,150 homes. Uh, it includes reducing barriers to the development of housing in key areas of the city, such as urban centers, boulevards, and major public transit stations. Uh, they're going to focus on expanding zoning permission for housing, including permitting four residential units and four stories within 800 meters of transit. Uh, it will also create new incentive programs for affordable housing. Pretty cool stuff in Ontario. Yep. Um, Halifax is going to receive $79.3 million in federal funding to build 2,600 homes. The agreement will incentivize the use of pre-approved building plans and develop an incentive program to convert commercial real estate to residential. Mm -hmm. Interesting, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. The agreement will prioritize improving the permit process and reduce costs for permitting, uh, encourage development along transit corridors, create incentives for small scale residential construction and create a program to identify surplus land for affordable housing. So uh, that's pretty much all that's going on. I've on been the wondering, they said incentives, um, incentives for residential um, construction. Mm -hmm. And I've been like, as all of this news has been coming out, I've been wondering if, um, you know, like I know in Edmonton for several years, we had like the Cornerstone grant where yeah. they, you know, there was an incentive, I, I think it was $40,000 to- 45, I think. 
um, oh, add, yeah, right. yeah, to add like a secondary suite um, into your property. <laughs> and then, so they would give you that money and then you would have like a five-year agreement with them to rent to um, low-income. low-income families or individuals. Yeah. And like, I just keep thinking about how, like, why haven't they brought that back? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess they need the cash to do it. So it's probably in these types of funds where they can have cash surpluses to um, offer those types of incentives out again. Um, So I wouldn't be surprised to see those types of things coming back, incentivizing people to um, add secondary suites and to do conversions and those types of things. Well, if we have time today, and depending on how many questions come in um, and where this discussion goes, I actually have another article which outlines how should Canada cities be mm. using the housing accelerator fund. So there's a bit of a guideline and expectations from the federal government on, uh, there's like a small list of things that are like, here's what we'd like to see you focusing on. Mm-hmm. And then in their application, they they put what they plan to do with the funds that they're applying for, and then they will get approved based on that and how much money they're going to get. So there is there is um, some rough guidelines. I I can't recall if I saw anything about you know adding secondary suites into homes. I think that like they want a little bit more than that. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Um, they it sounds like they want to build more homes as opposed to building more suites. But I don't know. But the but then also requiring them to change where people can build four units um also kind of like there's a direction you know what i mean like yes it's to help build more but then also saying hey you guys also need to let people build more on their properties yeah so yeah okay um i'll I'll keep continuing on and then we got to take a quick little break here but uh Kelowna um has an agreement as well, $31.5 million in federal funding to build 950 homes. It will prioritize allowing for higher density development along rapid transit corridors and make city-owned lands available for affordable housing development in partnerships with nonprofits. Kelowna plans to also expand the use of technology to streamline building permit applications and expand zoning for more infill housing in Kelowna's core. Uh, oh, back to uh, Ontario, Kitchener. Uh, the agreement with Kitchener is to deliver $42.4 million in federal funding to build 1,200 homes. Uh, the agreement will also encourage high and medium housing around Kitchener's light rail system, a uh, trail uh, transit system, uh, by making planning regulations more permissive. Uh, Kitchener will also work to make affordable housing easier to build by making land and incentives available to affordable housing providers. Uh, Moncton, New Brunswick, uh, the agreement announced with Moncton is to deliver $15.5 million in federal funding to build 490 homes. It encourages missing middle development, accessory dwelling units, and support nonprofit housing developers. Finally, Moncton will de- develop building plan templates for energy efficient multi unit residential buildings. Uh, Calgary, Calgary is going to receive a whopping $228 million in federal funding to build 6,800 new homes. Wow. Wow. The people are coming to Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> Guys would be happy. That was a huge, like that was a huge jump in, in yeah, funds and number of homes being built. Yeah. There's like a couple of them are like 1,700. <laughs> well, a lot of them are smaller cities. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Calgary's pretty big, but um, I think we all know about the, <clears throat> The interprovincial and uh, the interprovincial and um, uh, migration towards Alberta. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people moving to Alberta, and there's a lot of people um, immigrating outside of Canada mm-hmm. uh, into uh, uh, into Canada, and a lot's going to Alberta. So uh, we've seen all the stats. You guys have shared them. You guys know. I mean, I can share them again if you want. The numbers are very good for Alberta right now. And we do not have enough homes. And I love that we are also still the most affordable place to live in Canada. I mean, you don't got to be a uh, rocket scientist to, 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 to know that the, the things are looking good. Uh, so $228 million in federal funding, 6,800 homes. The agreement will with the city will work to ex- expand upon the city's office space conversion program. 
It will also create homes on city-owned land and proximity to transit stations and enable growth by allowing infill housing and established neighborhoods. Okay. So they're putting a lot more effort into converting city office space. City on land. But nothing in regards to like the um, identifying the mature neighborhoods. Mm. Very interesting. Uh, and lastly, we talked about the province of Quebec. Uh, the $1.8 billion in new funding for housing construction will lead to the creation of 8,000 social and affordable housing units. 500 of which will be reserved for people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. Uh, the agreement with Quebec will also focus on creating a project acceleration unit in collaboration with Quebec municipalities and adopting new government policies for land use planning with housing construction indicators on which municipalities will have to base their targets. That was the only, I mean, that's, that's the whole province of Quebec, but that was the only location that, um, that mentioned like um creating like homes for, for like homelessness and like people, people at risk of risk, homelessness yeah. yeah and that is like such an incredibly huge issue right now like if you look at any major city and, and even secondary cities like even like you know Leduc's a pretty small city but the amount of homelessness um that we've seen increase even just in this small city has been um crazy and so like that's a a real big issue at hand right now and i'm sure that i'm sure we'll see more of that kind of stuff coming out of here as well as to what the what the different cities who are participating in this how they can utilize some of that to um i don't know whether it's more shelters or temporary housing or whatever it may be for that transition that's a very good point yeah. that's a very good point that I, I i hadn't even noticed that yeah. uh that's that's something that's kind of getting ignored in this yeah um yeah, but I, I mean, I, a lot of it was the talk of low income housing, and and ultimately, those are the people who are at who are going to be at risk, right, of being homeless when there's no affordable housing for for those income levels. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess it is without directly saying it, tackling the issue, but yeah, it's just interesting that that was the only mention of it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Should we take a quick break and then? Um, I'm really interested to know that other article about um, the use of the funds. The Ab different, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's take a quick little break and we'll get back to it. If, guys, any questions about this, feel free to put in the comments. Um, I don't like presenting on the morning show. This is supposed to be an interactive show. So you guys got to get involved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy now. We'll be right back. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? At Kirkwood and Brennan, we are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do we help you get a mortgage, but we help you build a better real estate portfolio. Check us out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. Take the time now so you have more time later. And we are back. Hey, have you heard about um, Calvin Realty? I have. They're dope. They're pretty dope. <laughs> Edmonton and area real estate team. Um, if you're looking for investor focused realtors in the Edmonton area, uh, it's who we use and who I think you should use as well. But don't take our word for it. Um, I got Google reviews up here and I'm going to go and I'm going to find a recent Google review. Holy crap. 19 hours ago. Mm. I got a brand new one. Fun. <clears throat> Hope it's good. How many stars do you think it is? Five. Yeah. It is. Uh, Calvin and his team were the best. He delivered what he delivered what he promises. Very knowledgeable about the market, about the market, and look. He looks outside of the box to find ways to sell your property. He will offer you some advice, some expertise, uh, some sorry, some experts to support you uh, for getting your property sold during the whole process. Very honest and a hundred percent. We support his team. Merci. Ah, French. Yes. I it was <laughs> a little it. it was a pinch off and I'm like, okay. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> no offense. I'm just saying it's you could just you yeah. can tell. It's a great review and there's common <laughs> themes among the reviews about how they think out of the box and find creative solutions. Like do you notice that ongoing theme that mm -hmm. it's not like your co cookie cutter approach? Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. them a call. Absolutely. Uh they're they're the best. Uh we got a this weekend. Is today Thursday? Today's Thursday. Okay, so today we got our- Two days from we, now. Oh, oh wow. sorry. Okay, yeah, two days from now. Back it up. 
we got our <laughs> two-day REI Masters boot camp. Um, lots of people register for it. Um, just a side note, guys. Uh, make sure that if you've re- uh, if you're planning on attending, and we see so many people saying that they're going. Uh, when you go to Facebook and you go to the REI Masters or Real Estate Investing Masters um, Facebook group, you'll see in the events there the two day uh, REI Masters Bootcamp. Uh, you're clicking on the events, you're saying going, but you got to click on the Zoom link in there and register. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're going to get the link. Um, I'm asking you to do that because save me the trouble at 9 55 on Saturday morning. Uh, and uh, from getting 4,000 messages, me like, I, I don't know how to get in. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a little busy presenting a dope ass presentation on how to invest in real estate in Canada and how to, how to create financial freedom. Yeah, for sure. So anyways, you got um, to click on that Zoom link to get the to, to, to register to get the link. Wayne, I've had some people reaching out um, who can't make it live. Um, I, we were very aware that it's the weekend before um, Christmas that that hasn't gone above our heads. Not a creature. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately we had to reschedule. Wayne was in the hospital. Um, but No excuse. <laughs> you should have done it from the hospital bed, Wayne. What were you thinking? That hospital Wi-Fi could have supported you. Yeah. Um, but if people register and they can't attend, will they get a recording? This is a question because I don't know the answer. <laughs> mm. Well, tell you what. Register I'm in the and find Christmas out. spirit. <laughs> I'm in the Christmas spirit. Uh, if you register, and you got to register on the Zoom link so I can get your email um, so I know where to send it, and make sure you put your email and information in there, then yes, I will send the recording off. Awesome. Um, yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, filthy uh, animals. So it's, it's, so it's a hit. Sorry? You said you have filthy animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite uh, Christmas movie. That that is a good Christmas music uh, movie. Um, so December sixteenth and seventeenth, that's Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be uh, Saturday will be ten a.m. to two p.m. Sunday will be ten a.m. to one p.m. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, now, for those of you guys that are wondering, it is like it, it's a very surface level boot camp. Okay, like uh, I've also gotten messages from people being like, "Hey, are you going to be talking about land development?" No, I'm not going to be talking about land development. I'm going to be talking about the basics of real estate investing. If you're interested in it or if you want a refresher, um, we have so much more in-depth content. But um, but at the same time, we also don't do very surface level stuff very often. We don't do the basics very often. So um, this has been a this has been requested. Um, people are like, okay, I, I love all this really super complicated stuff you guys talk about, but it's over my head. It's over my head. So this is, um, if, if, if you've been at it for a few years, you, you know, you don't have to come. You can come if you want to, you're welcome. Doors are open. Um, but, uh, I just want to set some expectations for people because yeah. it is the last weekend before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't gotten your wife a present yet, I recommend getting your wife a present over going to this event. <laughs> can you respect <laughs> the fact that I'm being honest? Wow. Yeah. Now, Here's what's going to happen, Gabby. And the, like, I'm, 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 I'm a little disappointed you asked this question on the show. Now everyone's going to be like, oh, fuck, I haven't got my wife a present. Oh, I'll just get the recording. <laughs> and the, so here's the problem with something like that. Um, I've, been, I've been coaching real estate investors for I, four years now, maybe five, right? I know when people do stuff and when they don't do stuff. I know why people do stuff and why they don't do stuff. I have a pretty decent understanding of human nature when it comes to going against the grain and getting shit done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone's a little bit different, but when you get a recording, yeah, you're not going to yeah. watch it. Yeah. It's going to sit in your inbox. It's going to sit um, uh, partially played. You're going to listen to 10 minutes on your drive and 10 minutes on the way home. And you're not really going to fully immerse yourself in it. Yeah. Okay. That's true. You have to commit. I want. Let's retract. Not Merry Christmas to you guys. You're not getting a recording. I well, like, <laughs> like I feel kind of bad because there's some really good people that are like they have some legitimate excuses. But I also don't want you to to take the easy way out and be like, yeah, just send it to me. I'd rather whatever. Yeah. And that says so true. My videos to watch are piling up. Yeah. 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 And like, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of feel like we shouldn't, but at the same time, I also, I also want to be a nice person. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to hold yourself accountable. 
if you can make it, I don't give a shit whether you make it or not. I just want to make sure you watch it. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't care if you're there or if you watch it afterwards. It doesn't make any difference to me. I can't see you anyways. I'm presenting. I just want to make sure that you actually get it and you watch it. You get the information, you retain it, you take that information. And with this new understanding and expertise, you run with it and you change your life. That's all that matters to me. So I hope you can see from my position as a real estate investing coach and someone who understands people and understands, you know, why some succeed and some don't. If I just send it to you, the likelihood of you watching it this year is very slim. And the likelihood of you remembering about it in January is even slimmer. Mm -hmm. And it's also, um, we've made it um, on on both days. It's around, it's uh, 10 to 1 and 10 to 2. So you can still have breakfast with the family. Then you can disappear for a, a few hours. And then you still have all afternoon and all evening um, on both both days to get your shopping done and uh, do whatever you got to do. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a digestible amount of time. Yeah. I've, I've got my, um, so I, I still get education myself. Um, even I, I kind of sort of have like all of, sounds cocky, but like, I kind of got this whole real estate investing thing figured out. I spent years doing research and running numbers and stuff like that, but I still take courses from time to time just to like, just to see if anything's new and exciting. Not really. It's all still the same kind of stuff, but, uh, I've got one that's like sitting in my inbox and I haven't finished it. And I'm just, just like you. I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it during the day because I'm busy, I, like running our businesses. And then like in the evenings, like the last thing I want to do in the evenings is, is watch that. <laughs> like I'm just not excited about it anymore. So anyways, um, that's this, this, uh, this Saturday and Sunday, guys. So you can register again at Real Estate Investing Masters Facebook group. Um, if you are having trouble with finding it, just send us an email at info at reimorningshow.com and uh, I can just send you the link as well. Another Christmas gift. <laughs> uh, when, I saw, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, we had a question in the chat that I just went, thought we could quickly cover before we move back into our topic. Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Um, so Don here in the comments is wondering what exactly is all included in the Real Estate Investing Master's Mentorship Program? Do you, can you do a quick rundown of what the... I'm uh, just looking for his comments. So he says, yeah. So thinking about joining the mentorship program in the new year, just wondering what all is included. I know you get all of Barry's programs. Okay. So for those of you guys that know um, who Barry McGuire is, um, the OG of creative real estate, um, we've taken all of his courses. Um, they're, they're amazing. Um, when we were planning on building out the REI Master's Mentorship Program, uh, we were looking at, uh, similarly to what I was like talking about a minute ago, uh, of like why some succeed and some don't succeed. Um, I was I was researching that and I was also researching other programs in Canada that teach real estate investing. Um, and as a good entrepreneur, I want to know what works and what doesn't work. And uh, reinventing the wheel didn't make any sense to me. We took all of Barry McGuire's courses and they catapulted us to where we are today. Yep. We spent the first three years trying to figure it all out for ourselves, being stubborn, not wanting to spend any money. We took their courses instantly, just like rapid yep. success, rapid success, rapid cash. <laughs> so for those of you guys that know anything about their, their programs, they, they teach um, joint venture uh, capital raising. They teach uh, rent to own. They teach wholesaling. They teach fix and flips and they teach agreements for sale and other seller financing strategies. Um, called them up, say, Hey, yo, we're starting a program. Do you mind if we, um, buy your programs, uh, whenever someone joins? So when you join the area master's mentorship program, you are getting all of their home study kits. We pay for them. We just like, they, they send us a bill and you know, it costs us a lot of money, but at the same time, like it makes the most sense. Why, why would we go and rewrite it all? when they got a perfectly good program right there. So mm -hmm. we support them 100%. I was going to um, I was going to say Wayne that it's also we also have mad respect for them. Mm -hmm. Like they they taught us and mentored us um in our early years 
And um, this is also a, a massive way for us to say thank you and show them that we 100%. love them and support them and want like the same success for our students that they gave us. Absolutely. If you yeah. take these courses just like we did, you'll have the same level of success we did. Um, so when you join, uh, we're going to have a, a call right away out of the gate. I'm going to be booking a call with you one-on-one -on -one and I'm going to get to know you because I want to know everything about you. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know where you're at, what you've done. I want to know what you haven't done and why you haven't done it. And I want to get an idea of your resources and everything else. And then we're going to have a look at what your goals are. And then we're going to, we're going to work on the next 12 months building a plan on reverse engineering where it is that you want to be um, and taking into consideration where it is you are right now, the resources that you have, the commitments that you have, and, and building out a roadmap from where you are to where you want to be. Uh, from there, you're going to get access to the master's vault, which is a, a ridiculously robust, robust. <laughs> um, uh, a vault full of everything that you need, everything that you need. There's over 150 hours worth of training videos, workshops on everything. Um, introduction to multifamily, burr strategy, fix and flips. Uh, we dive deeper into agreements for sale. There's uh, building systems, creating systems for your business. There is, oh God, Gabby, help me out. We've done so many. <laughs> uh, you're not going to help me out? No. <laughs> oh, Gabby. We got uh, building your REI roadmap. We have real estate investing contracts with Barry McGuire. We have self-managing your properties. We have vetting contractors, sourcing materials. We've got a guide to finding low money down deals, uh, attracting tenants, uh, filling vacancies, <laughs> you, you name it. Raising capital mastermind, everything. Everything you could possibly yeah. need. Not to mention forms, checklists, Oh, yeah, leases, then, then, then the files, the <laughs> yeah. files that you, like the lease contracts, forms, checklists. Email um, templates for different situations. Yeah. Cheat sheets for fix and flips and renovations. You name it. Everything that you could possibly need. So we're building this program. I'm like, I here's the problem, what was happening. I know it's a bit of a long story, but like I, I get really passionate about this because I put so much effort into, into building the perfect program. I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with people and they'd be like, I want to do rent to own. Teach me. I'm like, we got an hour. I can't teach you rent to own in one hour. It's an eight hour course. So I tell people to go take a rent to own course and they're like, well, just, just teach me the basics of it. I'm like, well, I can't like, I can't give you too much information because you're going to go run around and you're going to fuck it up because you don't have the proper education. You got to take a course, then come back. And then they never do it. Or they'd be like, oh, I want to find low money down deals or sell the financing deals. I'm like, go take an agreement for sale course. I can't teach you that. And they're like, well, can you at least give me the forms? I'm like, eh. So it wasn't set up properly because people wanted, they, they came up with a plan. We, we develop a, a good plan, a good roadmap, but they didn't have the resources to support them. So I'm like, if we built, we got to build something. It has everything you could possibly need. So when you come to me and you say, I want this life, or I want my life to look like this, or I want this much money per month. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And I'm going to show you where to find all the information, the training and the resources to support you. It's a one-stop shop. So when you join the program, I'm not going to try and tell you, oh, multifamily is the only thing or, oh, rent to own is the only thing or Airbnb is the only thing or AFS is the only thing or BRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
So unlimited access to Gabby and I. Any questions that you want to ask during the day, you post in the Facebook group. Gabby and I are nonstop, always answering questions. Yeah. And we encourage you to answer as or ask as many questions as you have. So you can get the information, you can take the action. So that's the REM Master's Mentorship Program. It's pretty freaking amazing. Yeah. I implore you to compare it to any other program in Canada. And I want you to look at the price. I want you to look at the value. I want you to look at the content. And I want you to look at who's running it. And I want you to compare it. And you will not find a better program. And look at yourself too, because it only works if you work. Well, yeah, obviously. Well, <laughs> Is it obviously? <laughs> uh, I hope so. Uh, sorry, one last thing I want to add in there is that when you're looking at other programs, you'll you'll see that a lot of programs look like um, they have this um, they have this triangle formation where you've got your expert at the top of the triangle, and then you got all these little minions below, all these little real estate investors that have been investing for six months or twelve months or two years, whichever else they've done a few deals, and you think that you're going to be getting that person at the top. You think you're going to have access to them, but what you're actually getting is someone who's only been investing for eight months and they bought two deals, and that's your coach. That doesn't work like that. No, that that again, like when I look at other programs, I see it doesn't work. That does not fucking work. You're paying a lot of money. You want to get access to us. You get access to us. We answer the questions. Coaching sessions are with Gabby and I. You choose if you want Gabby or you want myself. That's what you're paying for, right? Mm -hmm. You're not paying for some schmuck who, who just did a burr the other, the, you know, last month and they, and they made a thousand bucks. You're looking for someone with actual wisdom and experience. And that's why. Okay. That's the REI Master's Mentorship Program. Sorry, I get sued. You can understand why I'm passionate about it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, REIMasters.ca. Um, there's going to be a lot more information. If you're going to the bootcamp this weekend, we're going to have a little bit of information there. Um, and then this is a, this is a heads up. There's a big promo coming after the weekend. Um, if you join next week after the bootcamp, uh, you're getting an extra six months for free. So not 12 months, you're getting 18 months. Damn. Yeah. You betcha. Uh, and Annette has a comment there. As yeah. Well. And that says, I'm happy to talk about my experience in the mentorship program. If you want to reach out. Yeah. She's a, uh, she's, She's an OG. Yeah, she is an OG. She's been around uh, since its uh, inception. And um, I mean, just look at her. Look at her now. Yeah. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. Okay. Look at her now. How should Canada cities use the housing accelerator fund? Okay. Uh, you I tell us, Wayne. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of talking. I need a, I need a sip of coffee. I, know, I need to turn that computer screen over here. It, it, something different with my coffee today. The, the people don't want to know about your coffee. <laughs> All right. A new federal housing program in Canada is being touted as a game changer for the country with some of the highest housing costs in the world. Uh, the Housing Accelerator Fund is a grant program that will inject $4 billion into, ca into Canada's cities and towns by 2026 and, uh, and 2027. Its intent is to use the power of the purse. Isn't that <laughs> hilarious? They're just saying that the other day is to use the power of the purse to incentivize cities to loosen zoning, conduct other regula regulatory reforms, and otherwise plan and lay the, the groundwork for lots of new homes. The cities apply for the money and must offer a credible plan to increase housing production to a target that exceeds the city's average annual rate of growth by at least 10%. According to former Vancouver chief planner Brent uh, Todarian, to 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 Todarian, the federal government is making clear it wants action, not talk. Uh, Tadarian wrote on uh, threads uh, or Twitter, I don't know, Twitter, uh, that the, the federal housing minister's letters are landing like meteors in city halls across the country. Wow. Bluntly confirming where applications don't go far enough in outlining what else cities have to do to get the funding. Wow. Hey. So that. Okay, recap that. I'm, okay, I... so the federal housing minister is sending letters and they're landing like meteors in city halls across the country and being very blunt, confirming where applications don't go far enough. Oh, So all okay. these applications are coming in and like, yeah, can I have some money? They're vague. Yeah. And they're being very vague and he's outlining exactly what cities need to do to get the funding. Okay. So they're, they're, they're being strict. very fucking strict. Yeah. You want my money? Give us what we're asking. Here's what he here's what he wrote on Twitter. Uh, if you're interested in housing policy, the Trudeau government's federal housing accelerator fund is shaping up to potentially be the most impactful housing policy in Canadian history. 
municipalities across the country are rapidly transforming local housing policy to access the funds. It's literally like, like literally changing the landscape of our cities. Like literally changing the landscape of our cities. It's a fucking game changer. Yeah. It's this is a big, like this is a big moment. <laughs> so, like, well, kind of what they were saying a minute ago, like the housing, the housing ministers are being very fucking clear. We're not just sending you money and be like, yeah, we're going to have more housing. They're yeah. like, no, you have to do this. Yeah. And who was it the other day we were reading about the, the mayor of Winnipeg was like, yeah, he wasn't, <laughs> wasn't very pleased with like them being very crystal clear on, on exactly what you need to do. It's quite interesting. I mean, say what you will about politics, say what you will about governments. They're, this is actually having an impact yeah. as opposed to just throwing money at it. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Tadarian uh, predicts that the, the housing accelerator fund will incite a wave of needed zoning reforms, unlocking missing middle housing throughout Canada as municipalities vie to access the money. Uh, the housing accelerator fund is an interesting mix of centralized power and bottom up planning. <laughs> I Sorry. feel like that was just a fancy statement. Bottom up planning just uh, <laughs> <laughs> makes me giggle. <laughs> you really have to put your bottom up <laughs> to get that money. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, the mayor of Winnipeg knows. <laughs> uh, Ottawa sets the goal, but there is significant local discretion in how to achieve it. As long as what you're doing is plausibly impactful, uh, cities must present an action plan with at least seven different initiatives to grow, seven different initiatives mm -hmm. to grow housing supply and speed up housing approvals. And they must do an assessment of their housing needs and document progress towards targets. Shit. Already Brampton, Ontario has got some money, Hamilton, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, these cities all have plans, including altering zoning, allowing more housing near transit, speeding up permitting processes, and other reforms. Dozens more cities are applying for the money. The goal is to help Canadian cities build 100,000 more homes than would otherwise have been built. If this, tar if this target is reached, this amounts to a not insignificant federal subsidy of $40,000 per home. Um, so using the one-time money well. Did you say something? No. No, sorry. Uh, the thing about... A program like this is that there are a lot of ways to use the money well and a lot of ways to use it poorly. The list of possible policies eligible for HAF funding is extremely open-ended and consists of uh, investments in housing accelerator fund action plans. So any initiative included in the proponents action plan and approved by CMHC. Uh, investments in affordable housing. Uh, so construction of affordable housing, repair or modernization of affordable housing, land or building acquisition for affordable housing. And then there's investments in housing related infrastructure. So uh, drinking water infrastructure that supports housing, mm -hmm. wastewater infrastructure that supports housing, solid waste management that supports housing, public transit, computer, uh, community energy systems, disaster mitigation, brownfield redevelopment, Hamilton was utilizing that, uh, broadband and connectivity, uh, capacity building, and site preparation for housing developments. Uh, investments in community-related infrastructure that supports housing as well. Uh, that includes local roads and bridges, sidewalks, lighting, bicycle lanes, fire halls, landscaping, and green space. Makes a lot of sense. So for some... Um, I can also see where the money can also disappear quickly into things that are not building houses. 100%. <laughs> they're like, oh, That's shit. why they say there's, there's ways that it can be very impactful and ways that they can totally waste the money. <laughs> yeah, we're going to build a... Uh, we're going to get some green space up in here. <laughs> we're going to build a ring road. I'm like, okay, but that's just... It's going in a circle. You're not really getting anywhere. How are we supposed to get to more houses? How are we supposed to develop it so that we can create new you know, directed towards a new development area. Well, when we're done, we'll, we'll put some off ramps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can understand why they're being so clear about that. And they're like, oh shit, we got no good drinking water here. This, this will definitely help build more houses, which is, a, which is, a, yeah. which is a real problem, yeah. but they, that's not for what sure. this is for. Oh, I feel like by saying that I'm going to get yeah. stomped on. <laughs> that was a bad example. Um, don't sometimes you wish you had like, what is it? Is it like, um, 
men in, no not men in black i don't know where they have like that like they like flash the pen and then you just like everybody forgets everything yeah well what i can do is i can just edit, <laughs> edit it, it out up. afterwards and then the people All that are people on the live are show live. can can <laughs> can tweet it later <laughs> Um, so the top action plans category itself encompasses a huge list of pol possible policies, including zoning and permitting reforms, incentive programs, and public-private partnerships. Innovation is encouraged. There's a lot that's worth doing in that realm. Can I just stop and say that I really like how this article is being written? Lately, I've been reading a lot of articles, and like I find that they're just like, you'll, you'll catch that like I'm, it sounds like I'm a robot because like people just, I don't know. They don't write very well. <laughs> this is a very well written, like it, it flows very nicely. You can tell that I'm, I'm, I'm reading like I'm talking. Anyways, it's the stuff later down the list, uh, quote unquote, investments in physical infrastructure that starts to give me a queasy feeling that we're going to see cities use this money in ways that undermine their prosperity. Mm. Extending infrastructure to sport housing, doing site preparation for greenfield land on the edge of a town. Uh, there are things that might induce the building of homes. Uh, there are also things that could easily worsen the long-term financial position of cities and towns that are already struggling with, with insolvency. Canada, like the United States, is decades into the, the growth Ponzi scheme model of development. I'm going to have to click on that article yeah. later. In which cities take on permanent liabilities in the form of public infrastructure to support development that then fails to cover its own costs. Oh. Ah, okay. Very, well, very common. Like this is what you see all the time. Money gets pumped in. They're thinking like, oh, if we build the infrastructure, it's going to create jobs. It's going to yada, yada, yada. But it never does, Flux. right? Yeah. Uh, and we call it, quote unquote, investment. Uh, there's a little track record. There is little track record of being rigorous about doing the long-term accounting with new development under normal circumstances. How rigorous will cities be when it's Ottawa's money? Uh, I'm this, uh, this writer says, I'm not a naysayer here about the transformative potential and or value of the HAF or the depth of Canada's housing crisis. I'm saying that there are two paths the city can pursue, one of which will be a very productive and potentially game changing, and one of which will likely be harmful. Uh, the good, uh, the good uh, side of this um, program use, use the housing accelerator fund as an opportunity to truly accelerate shift housing production into a permanently higher gear by making structural reforms to what it takes to build in your community. Uh, the bad, uh, use the HAF as a source of one-time subsidy for development that would not be viable or financially productive on its own. Uh, so the do's and don'ts, uh, there is going to be a lot of local nuance to the conversation about how to prepare a housing accelerator fund proposal and what to emphasize in any given community. Here is some broad conceptual guidance for local leaders trying to work through this in the form of two do's and two don'ts and two do's. Uh, don't use one time money to take on recurring liabilities. So uh, roads, drinking and water, wastewater infrastructure. These things are not a one time gift for you to give to open up more land for housing. They're maintenance obligations you assume in perpetuity. There is also no city in Canada that could that should even be considering subsidizing new greenfield subdivisions. Not until you've done everything you can, and I promise you haven't, to unlock the potential of infill development in areas already mm -hmm. served by infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's a very good article, by the way. Yeah. Uh, don't use it to achieve a one-time effect. So reducing private developers' costs by doing, for example, site preparation might bring a slightly cheaper housing unit to the market. Over time, the impact of that will be swallowed up by the market forces that drive mm -hmm. the prices of existing homes. Uh, this in an ineffectual use, this is an ineffectual use of a one-time grant of outside money. In the worst cases, you will be subdivising, sub, subsidizing development that would have via that would, sorry, that would have been viable without subsidy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do look for large multiplier effects. The goal here is to spend the money in ways that pay the community back many times over. That's a yeah. very good point. Uh, a number of Canadian cities have already announced they will be exploring pre-approved building plans as part of their HAF proposals. I think it was, who was it? Uh, Moncton. Moncton will develop building plan templates for energy efficient multi-unit uh, residential uh, buildings. Great idea. Yeah. Great idea. Have them pre-approved. Yeah. As opposed to just like allowing anyone to build four Whatever. units, yeah. four high, 
in you know a, a, on these lots and uh no no real application approval is needed <laughs> that's where you're going to get into trouble yeah um Uh, there are, these are an excellent idea. Once you have invested in that intellectual property, you have something you can continually smooth the process and reduce the cost of infill development for almost no marginal cost. Think design contests resulting in such plan templates. Think proof of concept. Uh, there's a lot of room to get creative with policies or initiatives that will unlock a door that will then stay unlocked. Mm -hmm. uh, do look for opportunities to permanently change the way housing is built in your community. In every Canadian city, there are opportunities to build more housing in existing neighborhoods, uh, thickening up the prosperity and vitality of your community while meeting growing housing needs. And in every Canadian city, there are regulatory and procedural obstacles to that housing. Uh, focus your action plan on fixing your zoning. Fix your permitting process. Identify bottlenecks and eliminate delays. Make sure your local small developer community is in the room for these conversations, yeah. which we've seen a lot locally yeah. here in Edmonton, and that you understand what obstacles prevent them from getting to building. The HAF is a great one-time opportunity to permanently remove roadblocks to financially productive and badly needed infill development. That's great. Very, I think every very should informative that. and um i don't know if you saw me wing but like i was like yeah yeah nodding my head that entire time like yes 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 yeah um i'll be honest i i wasn't in the room for the these discussions because i i i'm it's not what i'm focusing on yeah um, I wasn't in the room for these discussions, but I've had a lot of conversations with people that were in the room for these discussions and what's being proposed in, in our, in our uh, market, Edmonton. Based on all the information that we learned today, do you think that they're utilizing or that, 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 they, that they put their best foot forward? Well, I'm interested because I know that Edmonton uh, wasn't up on on that article as a city who's been approved for the accelerator fund as of yet. I'm assuming their application is in and I that think they're it's coming, yeah. working on it. So all that we know right now is that all of the bylaw changes, right, right. that they've made, which which have far exceeded the expectation of the fund, like you heard in all those other cities that it was just basically like within 800 meters of, of transportation, we will allow four units and that's it. Whereas the city of Edmonton is like open, like open for business, the yeah. entire city, anywhere you can do basically whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And so I'm interested to know what else is in their plan um, to, to use this fund. Like it'll, I, yeah. I saw the arguments for the people that weren't um, that weren't happy about it. And the arguments were very clear that like, you're basically just like, when you say like open for business, you say like, you can just like rezone stuff without any, you know, public approval or, or consideration. It's yeah. like, I'd like to see some more city approved building plans as an investor, as a capitalist, I, I, I'm, ta I'm, I'm being, I'm being real right now. Cause as, as an investor and a capitalist, I'd be like, they can't fucking tell me what to build. Like I want to, I want to build it the way that I want to build it. Uh, so I, I, I can, I can argue both sides, but I don't like the idea of that much money being pumped into it and just opening up the doors and just allowing people to do whatever the fuck that they want. Cause I don't trust people. And I, I fear for our city and I fear once it's done, you can't revert. Well, you can change it like a year later or whatever, but like, but the damage is already done. I don't know. I just feel like it's wild west and Bird baby. <laughs> Bert, well, there you go. There you go. We are the Wild West. We are the Wild West. <laughs> uh, Time will tell, Wayne. Time I will like tell. it. I like it. I like that there's op options, but I don't know. I don't see it lasting. I see changes coming. It would be nice to have seen a little bit of a little bit more structure in there. Um, just like seeing what the other cities are doing and stuff. It's like, but but we haven't seen we haven't seen the application. We haven't seen the the plan that that goes beyond what they've done with the zoning bylaws. So. Um, I'm now anxiously awaiting. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so lots of, there's dozens of applications already. So we're going to start to see more news from different cities. 
Um, obviously, we heard about Winnipeg, you know, last week. Um, and, you know, you'll see them on the list as well and whether they're getting approved and whatnot. Um, the one thing I'm curious about is you talked about Edmonton. You said they weren't on the list and they weren't on the list as in, uh, up until a week ago. Um, so I'm wondering with the application, can you just say what you're going to do? Or do you actually have to get it approved, get the bylaw change approved ahead of time, mm. show that you've done it and then apply, mm. which fuck me. Yeah, like, if you if didn't you're... get it approved. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Now you're pot committed. <laughs> you're 100% pot committed. You don't get the money to support it. Yeah. Or like like the whole reason what you're doing is is for that, for that big payout. Yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah, I, there's I... lots more research that we can do into that to see. You know, all, all these questions come up, the more you learn, it's like yeah, a rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll keep on, do, I'll, I'll keep on diving more into it. I mean, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about it. I see people talking, sorry. Um, I see people talking about, uh, you know, the changes, but I don't see anyone really talking about the housing accelerator fund and, and, and the, 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 the requirements that go along with it. So yeah. we'll keep filling in on that and uh, keeping things topical and relevant for you guys. And if you guys have any more questions about it, you know, like I said, Feel free to ask. Um, do me a favor. Bring your questions tomorrow because I can't keep putting together a one-hour presentation every morning. <laughs> A.K.A. just reading articles. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, today's Thursday. So you know what Thursday means. Coaching call. Yeah. So if you're part of the REI Master's Mentorship Program, Thursday nights uh, is our weekly coaching call. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, I was talking with uh, Trung the other day when we were doing a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and um, Trung's going to be bringing, I believe, uh, a deal uh, analysis that we're going to analyze nice. and uh, review. Uh, Trung's building is uh, is wholesaling business. Awesome. Um, so, um, getting a better understanding of how to analyze deals for uh, fix and flips, how to how to how to basically put together um, a package, you know, that you are going to. A wholesale package that you're going to uh, advertise to yeah. other fix and flippers yeah. or so investors. important to know the numbers if you're targeting yeah if you're going to be a wholesaler you gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta be smarter than a fix and flipper yeah you gotta be able to present it um as a no-brainer for them a lot of people don't understand this sorry i know a little over on time but like people think that wholesaling is all about finding deals and selling deals well, like no you actually um sorry finding deals and that like you know people are just going to buy it you there's a lot of sales mm -hmm. and marketing involved in the back end of wholesaling there is a there's there's marketing and and negotiating on the front end when you're looking for the deals when you're negotiating and you're securing them but then there's also a lot of sales involved in the selling of that deal to another investor so you got to be an absolute master in that you got to understand how to build it how to present it uh that package deal to someone so yeah. i think that that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight which is mm -hmm. uh, pretty exciting and if you want on Trung's uh, email list, reach yeah, out reach to out him. to Trung. Trungvo. <laughs> uh, uh, but on Facebook, it's uh, I believe it's Tony uh, Trungvo. Yeah, you'll find him. Yes, Tony <laughs> Trungvo. There you go. Okay, you guys. Free marketing, Tony. Have a wonderful Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Interested in being a guest on the show? Send us an email to info at reimorningshow.com.